Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This may be a video that I'm making that is completely useless, but I think that a lot of people will find value in it. So let me explain. So over the past few years, I've been getting more and more into software development. Now, mostly kind of from the web application standpoint. So PHP, um, HTML is obviously basic, but, but some kind of JavaScript as well. Um, and through this process, I've learned the importance of not only backing up the data that I'm, or the uh, code files that I'm writing, as well as like the data I'm running for the website. Um, and with that being said, um, one of the things that I've come to know and love is GitLab. GitLab is a self-hosted version of basically GitHub. It is a Git wrapper, if you want to say it that way. Um, essentially, it just takes a nice um, interface. It puts a nice interface onto Git, so there's a web interface to it and you're able to kind of store your code on it and it does all the version history, revisions, um, merge requests, etc. Um, it's a really nice way to keep track of all of my data for all of my websites and web applications that I have. So with that being said, um, today I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you GitLab in this video. Um, I'm going to focus on the coolest part of it to me, which is how GitLab actually deploys the code to my web applications. Now, this is something that I've not really seen many people talk about. Um, and as I'm getting more and more into software development, I'm realizing the importance of a good CI and CD workflow. So CI is continuous integration and CD is continuous deployment. And essentially, in basic terms, what this means is this is the integration between your code base, so the versions that you have on your code, um, to your actual server where the code is deployed. So essentially, what this means is this is the process for how your code goes from your code base, from maybe VS Code on your computer, deploying it to your code base, and then going out to your servers. Now, um, in this case, I really typically usually only have about one to two web application servers. Um, that run Nginx with um, maybe a SQL database and an, Ng in an Nginx web page. Um, but there's a lot of scenarios where you may have tons of servers and you want your code to go through and deploy it amongst all of the servers, maybe do a test to make sure the code is valid and the code is working before it continues deploying, all that kind of stuff. You can get really advanced with it. So without further ado, let's get into this and take a look at how um, CI and CD pipelines work specifically in GitLab, but this will work kind of on GitHub as well. So um, I'm going to show you, I have a Beam Networks um, project on GitLab. It's a Beam Networks project. And essentially on this project, um, I have basically um, just some bash scripts that I want to deploy amongst a server. So um, I have this written in a bunch of other databases as well. Okay, so we are here inside of GitLab. Um, and what we are looking at right now is basically the GitLab CI file. So you want to have this file in your code base and what this file does is it's essentially just a really really basic way um, that shows you how your code it's basically a pretty basic process um, of which your code goes through the deployment stages um, you'll see um, in this specific code we only have one stage which is deploy but you could have test you could have deploy and there's a few others you could have as well in this we're kind of running a workflow and this is called deploy to mk docs this is actually borrowed from some code that I wrote in a different project. Um, and this is going to run in the deploy stage. Um, variables, we have no, um, we have a git strategy variable set to none. Um, that actually doesn't necessarily matter. Um, only main, this is saying it's only going to run for the main um, branch of the um, project or the code base. Next, we have the script. This is what's actually going to happen, and this is essentially how you are going to deploy the code. So in all of my cases, basically, I have a worker node that goes and it actually SSHs in to my um, web application servers, and it's going to literally go to the directory, and then it's going to pull it. Um, and I have a um, SSH key on every single web server that references GitLab. So it all has authentication into GitLab, to pull the code securely because it is locked down. So you guys can go to this URL of GitLab and you're not gonna get in because it's behind a username and password. Or in this case, this is going to be through an SSH key. So basically though, in this script, it's going in to the directory, pulling the code. Um, and this is running on the tags of the BN web runner. What is a runner, you may ask? Well, a runner is how GitLab connects to your servers. So in this case, on this project, I have a runner set up that is configured to essentially go through and run this script. So inside of the runner essentially is where I have the authentication between the runner and then the web application server. So if we go into our runners here, you will see that we actually have a LXC container for running BN runner jobs. Um, but we also do have one down here. We have another available runner, which is the RO portal-1, um, which is not enabled for this project. So 
Um, it's actually not going to run at all for this project because it's got a different tag on it and it is doing a different purpose and it does not have any access to my um, web application servers because that is for something else. So inside of this though, if we go into here, we have an LXC container that I've created inside of Proxmox that essentially basically just has that one single tag and it's got access to my web application servers. So it is pretty cool. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Okay, apologize, I'm darker, the lights are bright. Um, anyways, let's create a container. We're going to give it the host name of bn-demo-runner, and we're gonna give it an unprivileged container, nesting, I don't really care. Resource pool, we're going to assign to beam networks. Password, we're going to set a password on here, um, and then we'll go to templates, and we're going to pull this from the ISOs. We'll give it Ubuntu 24.04. Eight gigs of storage is fine, one core is fine, we're going to give it one gig of RAM just because we can. It's going to be a little bit faster that way. Um, we'll throw it on the VLAN number 70, no firewall, DHCP, um, and we'll just say DHCP for IPv6. Uh, DNS is going to be from the host settings. Then we're going to go over to confirm, start after created, done. So no matter what hypervisor you're running, you can actually do this in any um, device. You could do this on a Pi, you could do this on a server, you could do this on any other virtual machine in an LXC container. It does not matter as long as GitLab can access this device and this device can access your environment. Okay, so inside of our new runner, we need to install um, curl. And I th think that is actually it. Curl is not actually installed. Oh, sudo apt install curl. I don't think curl is installed by default on these, so we just need to install that as well as the utilities required for that. Um, but as soon as we have curl installed, it is basically, oh, we got to update. sudo apt update dash y and sudo apt install curl dash y. Okay, so um, with that being said, we do want to go back over to GitLab and we're going to um, create this configuration file. Um, I just think it's going to be easiest if we do this first. So I'm going to pull up my demo um, configuration file for the CI pipeline, and then we'll paste this into our new project um, of the Beam Networks project, because that was actually the BN web project. Now we want to do this in the Beam Networks project. Um, we're gonna go into our projects over here. This is actually basically VS Code just hosted inside of GitLab, which is really cool. Um, and then we're gonna paste this in here, and essentially now it's just a matter of adjusting some of these variables. So in this case, what I want to do is we're going to deploy the code on um, a server um, that I have. It's called Gopher6. So Gopher6, we're going to log into. And I'm gonna have to do this on the side because there's a lot of stuff on the server, but um, you'll have to trust my word for this one. So we're gonna actually be deploying this code to a server I have called Gopher9. Basically what I have on the server is a GitLab um, or a Git clone of the Beam Networks database. So um, what we're going to do is now we're going to switch this directory. So we're gonna CD into slash root slash beam dash networks. And then now we're just going to leave this pull command here because that's gonna be fine. So um, we're gonna tag this to bn demo dash runner. And um, we're going to save this. I'm gonna leave this name the same because it's gonna be easier. Save this, commit, and we're gonna say updated CI file commit to main. Okay, so now inside of here, inside of our GitLab repository, we're gonna go over to CI slash CD. Um, and then in here, we'll go to runners and we're gonna do new project runner. Um, now we're going to tell it what it is. So this is a Linux runner. The tag is going to be, so this tag we're going to give um, bn-demo-runner or whatever we just typed in. Yeah, bn-demo-runner. Um, and then description is going to be um, test runner for YouTube. Um, and now we'll just click create. So this is going to be a Linux runner. It's going to generate a config for us. Okay, so on our um, LXC container, we're gonna say sudo apt install GitLab runner, which actually we don't have that. So we do need to actually um, download their repository. And then now we will install the GitLab runner. So um, it is, going through and installing all this stuff, but we do need to install the GitLab runner utility, which is going to let us run the GitLab runner software. And then now we will paste in the sudo apt install GitLab runner, say yes, because we do want to actually install it. Um, and then now it's just a matter of going back to GitLab and then we're going to grab our, grab our runner command. So it actually, it generated a command for us that we can run to register the runner. All right, so now we're gonna paste in our runner command. So we are registering our runner click enter, and it's gonna ask us to confirm some details. Uh, in this case, we are confirming the instance URL. We're gonna give it the name, and now we're gonna type in SSH, done. So we can do Docker, Kubernetes, Docker, um, 
machine, Docker Windows, Shell, Parallels, VirtualBox, um, all kinds of different options that we have. So now we're going to enter in the SSH server address, um, and now we just need to basically paste in the IP address that we want the runner to talk to. Done. SSH port, uh, we're going to leave this at 22. SSH user is going to be root. SSH password is just going to be a blank password for now. Identity is going to be stored in slash root slash dot SSH slash ID underscore RSA. So the runners page is going to show us the information that we need about our runner. So this says test runner for YouTube. Um, and then now if we go back to Beam Networks, I can tell you guys that the GitLab CI file has been last edited July 20th, 2024. Um, so now if we go into here, um, and why don't we edit our readme file and we can edit this single file only. And we're just gonna change something real fast on this file. Um, I'm gonna have to blur out a lot of this code, so I apologize. So now we're going to commit changes to the code that we just wrote. Um, and now I'm going to watch on the other screen to see if our code is actually getting deployed because at this point our code should be getting deployed automatically. So like I said, it was July 20th, 2024, and I'm watching for it to see if it is now deploying and updating our code. And there we go. It says August 18th. Um, so that's perfect. So basically what this did is this actually went through um, and it did SSH into our web server or our server in this case and it did pull the code down correctly as expected um, pretty easily I'd say so essentially you just have to have the GitLab CI file you have to configure a runner set up some kind of container or runner or something that can connect to every other machine and then it will automatically deploy your code for you every single time you make a commit um, to the main branch so if you're doing this kind of in the test branch or the develop branch or whatever nothing will happen, your code won't get deployed. Um, but this leaves really cool room though for um, a nice dev environment. So you could theoretically push to a develop or a testing branch um, and then it can deploy it from the testing branch into some kind of testing environment. And then once you're ready, you can commit that to your main branch and your code will get deployed automatically. It's a really nice process, really good flow for your code. And I think it's a pretty efficient way of doing things. Um, it makes it a lot easier because then you don't have to go on your server and update the code and pull it down, all that kind of stuff. It's literally just doing it in GitHub and then GitLab, GitHub will take care of the rest. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this was informational and helpful. Um, I'm recording for 17 minutes, so I really hope it's not 17 minutes long. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video.